Oh my god! <laughs> okay, um, I like don't remember how to do these. What's up guys, it's Griffin and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's YouTube video, I'm going to be answering questions that you guys sent in on my Instagram as well as doing my makeup slash an updated everyday makeup tutorial. Did that just come out smoothly? Nuts. Cuckoo logo. I recently got this like, as you can tell, I recently got this makeup bag from Marshalls and it actually fits all of my makeup into one bag. Why do I carry so much makeup around? I like doing different looks. What are we doing for today's look? Who knows? I'm gonna put my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> Why am I nervous? My horoscope notification. Then you may feel a boost of confidence. Oh shit, I love it. Okay, I might have to get like a little clip. Perfect. Okay, ew. Wait, I don't have my auto focus on because I'm doing manual focus. Oh god. Um, my neighbor is on the patio across from me and he can definitely watch me making this YouTube video right now. I love this for me. Oh, heat apartment complexes. Okay, anyway, we're gonna start with the Too Faced Hangover Primer. Not because I'm hungover. My skin's like pretty dry, so I'm just gonna do this primer. So I guess I wanted to do this video not only because I want to actually get back into YouTube, I wanted to give you guys like a look at where I've been genuinely for the last like three years, but mostly for the last year. I don't even really know where to start. None of this is like planned out. I'm just kind of going for it, talking, and whatever happens, happens. So I guess like three years ago-ish, I like completely quit. Not completely quit, because I was like still kind of active on Instagram, but like I basically quit doing social media. Like I was active, kind of, but like once a month. Whereas like before I was posting every single day, all day, non-stop, anyone and everyone could see what I was up to all the time. And don't get me wrong, like I love doing social media and I always have, but I got into a really bad like mental headspace in 2019. 2019 was genuinely like one of the worst years of my life and I needed time for myself. So I stopped doing social media as much. Now I'm going to be using the illuminating CC cream from IT Cosmetics in the color. Hello? Hello? Where is the color? I feel stupid. Well, it's the lightest shade they have. IT Cosmetics CC cream only has like eight shades or something and it's the lightest one that they have. I really do like the way that it makes my skin look and it's not too full coverage. So I do two pumps of it on the back of my hand and I'm just going to blend it in with a beauty blender. Anywho, I don't know if you guys have ever heard anyone say this. Stopping social media, even if for like a little bit of a time period, like a couple of months, is like the death of your social media. It's really hard to come back from that. And it's not that I'm here trying to come back for like the numbers or anything like that. I just genuinely enjoy this. But I will say that it's hard to get back into like being motivated with it. It's hard to get people interested in your content. And I do want to have people that I can interact with. And it's just really hard to be able to get back to that point. So with that being said, three years ago, I took a break off of social media and I really tried doing what I could for myself mentally to be able to get into the headspace to be able to do it again. And then wham, bam, chicken and ham, COVID. COVID hit. Yeah. I went to the last playlist live before COVID and I remember it was like a thing, but people weren't really concerned about it being like in the States at that point, I don't think. And then we get back from playlist and everything starts shutting down. And I decided to move back home with my family for a couple of months until a manager in LA reached out and was like, hey, I want to meet with you. Come visit LA and let's talk. So I decided to come visit and then I ended up moving into a content house with a few of my friends, which was a lot of fun, but it's also just really difficult. Not anything wrong with any other people, but I love living alone. Being forced to do content or like made to do content in a certain way, like that's not your way of doing it, makes it very unenjoyable. And that was like in the prime of me trying to get back into social media and trying to enjoy it again. It took me longer to recover from that because I already was like not loving it because of my mental headspace. And like, I was just trying to get back into like the swing of things. So I was like, oh, content house, like perfect. That'll push me. It pushed me in the wrong direction. And while I was living there, one of my best friends passed away. And it was really, really hard for me to recover from that one. So then again, stopped doing social media, wasn't very active. Like I kind of was because again, I was in a content house. And even though my friend had just passed away, I was still being made to like make these TikToks and do everything that like, honestly, at the time I was so freaking depressed. I did not want to be doing any of that. Like I had contracts and I couldn't not make videos and do things 
weddings and like in photo shoots for the house and everything like that. I am popping in on my phone because I think I just want to be really transparent. I'm editing this video right now and I'm realizing that I'm like sugarcoating a lot of the things that I'm saying in this part. When one of my best friends passed away, I was literally forced to do photo shoots, content, videos, vlogs, all these things, not just for my channel and my socials, but other people's um, and like our house channel and everything like that. Everyone in the house knew, everyone saw the mental breakdown, the panic attacks I was having. Everyone saw the state that I was in and all the other girls in the house were really supportive and really there for me and trying to help me through it. But the guy running the house was getting mad at me and told me that I'd be homeless had I not participated in the photo shoots, the videos and all of the content. Now I'm getting my matte bronzer stick from Milk and my lip and cheek stick in the color Work from Milk and I'm going to apply those to my face. Bronzer applied. I start with the darkest shade first so I start blending here and I blend upward. It's really hard to do makeup with like just the viewfinder. I think, oh yeah, I started kind of getting back into social media. I got a PC and I started doing some Twitch streaming, which was fun. And like throughout this time, I was very active on TikTok, which I did enjoy and I saw some traction with. Yeah, I don't know. I just still wasn't like loving it. I do think that I very much enjoy this like long form. Like I can sit here and have a conversation. I feel like I'm talking to a friend right now. And it doesn't feel like I can do that with TikTok where it's a little bit more skit like videos or like it just doesn't feel like I am 100% myself. So I like the version of social media where I can be myself and just talk about anything and everything and sit down and have an actual conversation versus sitting there lip syncing a few lyrics, you know? I love lip syncing some lyrics and having a good old time. Hell, I was doing it this morning. It's just not what is the fulfilling part of social media to me. Oh yeah, I'm also redhead now and you guys have pretty much, I mean there was a time period where you guys saw me as brunette, but you guys have for the most part seen me as blonde. I'm a redhead. Now I take my Hourglass Vanish foundation in the color Shell and I apply that as a concealer. So fast forward, I stop doing streaming and I kind of start having this feeling of like, what am I doing with my life? What do I want to do with my life? Which has been happening this whole time, but like it really set in in that moment. What do I find enjoyment in? And I was in a really bad mental headspace uh, again. And so I was like, okay, I need to figure out where I'm at mentally, what's going on, why I'm like this mentally and how I can fix it. So I went through a little breakup and that's kind of what made me realize like I need to really get my shit together. I want to be happy. I don't want to be this person who sits around sad anymore. I'm so over it. I think for a little bit, I was kind of just like dwelling in it and allowing myself to be sad instead of doing anything about it. And I was kind of like, Ugh. I hate to admit this, but I was like throwing myself a pity party and I was like, mm, I'm sad, mm, I'm depressed, poor me. Like type, you know, Ugh. I hate, I hate it. After I went through a breakup, I was like, okay, no, 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 none of this anymore. So one of my best friends, Brie, not one of my best friends, my best friend, we're hanging out and she is talking about how she has a trip planned to New York. She invites me to New York and I'm like, um, you know, honestly, I'm not in the right headspace to go. I literally hate admitting these things, but I think this is something that everyone goes through, especially after a breakup. Also, I'm using the PH freckles stick thing to do fake freckles. Uh, after she invited me to New York, I said no, pretty much because of the fact that I was hopeful that my ex would be like, hey, let's meet up. Hey, like I'm, I'm in the area, let's catch up, let's talk. Even though we were broken up, I was hoping that there was some off chance that he would ask me that. And so I was like, I don't really wanna go to New York because it was like a two week trip. And I was like, I'm not willing to waste two weeks where this man could come at me any moment and wanna talk to me. Hold, let me do my freckles. Okay, so then you blend them out. Okay, so at that point, I was making a decision not even for myself in any remote possible way. I thought I was being like, so my best friend is like, no, we're going to New York, surprise me with a ticket. And I was like, fuck, I can't say no to that. I swear we're getting to the questions you guys sent. Now we're doing eyeshadow though. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. So we set off to New York and we were there for about two weeks. In that time span, there were three hospital visits. Someone broke into the Airbnb and I got beat up by a homeless guy in New York. Like I'm not even kidding. Pulled out a belt, whipped me with it, shrugged, walked away. I'm gonna actually call after this video my ADA and see if if I can share like stuff with you guys now, like information about it. And also see if I can get that surveillance footage. I honestly want to see that. Am I healed from it? Who knows? Then I get back from New York and it's time for me to move out of my apartment and I have like two weeks to find a new place. And I'm like, 
I didn't even think about this at all. So I go to Home Depot to get boxes to pack up my stuff. By the way, I'm using the Hula Bronzer with the Hula Bronzer brush. These two guys start brawling in the middle of Home Depot, throwing hands, yelling, fighting. I don't even know what's happening, why they're fighting. Then one of them pulls out a gun and starts pointing it around. And I'm one of the people that he pointed it at. I'm like, what is happening? Why do I keep almost dying? Am I okay? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. But the guy like ran out of Home Depot and I just like left. Cause I was like, dude, there's so many people here that are witnesses, so many of the workers were like standing right next to me. I'm about to freak out because I had just gone back from New York and literally like five days ago had just experienced that guy beating me up. So I left Home Depot and I was like, y'all are on your own. I'm going to be using the Huda Beauty Nude Medium. My palette is jacked. Don't talk about it. I'm mixing this color and this color together to do my outer corner. What happened after Home Depot? Oh, I moved out and I am now living with my best friend. I, in the last couple of months, have started a jewelry business. I will insert some pictures of like the phone charms and necklaces that I've made. I'm going to the edge of the earth's atmosphere in about a year or two and actually you guys are also able to. The down payment is only $500 so I will <laughs> insert some video footage to show you guys like what I'm talking about and everything down below. If you guys wanted to get tickets for it or anything I have a link and a discount code if you guys wanted to participate. I don't know what to expect. Who the hell would know what to expect when going to the edge of the earth's atmosphere? Atmosphere, not me. Okay, I'm doing the same thing but under my eye to smoke it out. I guess we should get into like some of the questions that you guys asked me. Okay, so I'm using this like sunny golden peachy blush from Benefit. I get my brush all up in there. I knock off any of the excess powder. I love doing the tip of my nose. It's been something I've been obsessing over lately and it's called Refi and it's a white gel that really sets your brows into place. I think people also use it to like lay their edges. First question, do you ever get anxiety about the inconsistent income of social media and job security? Oh, okay. We're getting into it. Absolutely I do. Money and relationships are like the two biggest stressors in my opinion. I think financial stability is a huge concern for a lot of creators because it's not like a nine to five income. We don't have health health insurance. It's like this whole other entity, this whole other world. And like you could go six months with a brand deal every single week. And then you could go six months without a singular brand deal. Yeah, you could have the income right now. You go do these like fun and crazy cool things. Who knows? Like two months from now, what if you're not getting any brand deals? You also just don't want to accept every single brand deal that comes your way. Like you want to be particular about it. You want to accept brand deals and work with companies that like represent you and who you are. I'm going to do my eyeliner off camera really quick. I'll be right back. We're back with some winged eyeliner. How old are you and how old were you when you started social media? By the way, we are going to be using the Huda Beauty Light Glow Obsessions Mini Face Palette. Obviously, I use these two colors the most, so I'm going to mix those together. And I am 20... Oh my god, I forgot how old I am. <laughs> I'm 24, I'm about to be 25. Maybe I'm trying to push it out of my brain because I'm like terrified of being 25 because that's when your brain stops developing and like what the f but I started social media when I was like, I want to say like 16. I'm coming up on 10 years of social media. The next question is, are you single? If so, can I take you on a date? I am single, but I am also spending right now focusing completely on myself. As I've explained, I took a few years off of doing things that I like actually loved and enjoyed because of like my mental well-being. And I really want to get back to a place where I'm fulfilled by the things that I'm doing in life. And I feel like this is like the right steps to get there. And really though, Italy time the Billy. From the Urban Decay Prince palette, there's like this white shimmery color, When Doves Cry. Oh, so good. I'm gonna put that in my inner corner. By the way, guys, I did my own nails. I am so proud of them. You don't understand. What string or thread do you use for your phone charms? Oh, I can show you. This is like the little string that I use. It's super thin. Um, I will put a picture of what brand and everything, but I get it from Michaels and it comes in like a four pack. Would you ever want to come to New York City? I, surprisingly, even though all that stuff has happened, to me in New York, I would love to go back. By the way, I'm gonna be using Lash Paradise from, I believe this is L'Oreal, or even move there for a little bit. I don't think I would wanna live there like permanently, but I do love New York and I love the energy. I feel very motivated there. I love that you have to walk a lot of places. I love that I don't have to own a car there. This mascara is great. Isn't it great?
What show are you currently binging? I just recently started the show called Claws. It's about these five girls who run a money laundering business out of their nail salon. I'm literally on episode, like I finished episode one, I'm like halfway through episode two. Tonight is the last episode, the finale of The Bachelorette, and I'm really freaking stoked on that one. Oh, Sharp Objects, that's really good. Oh my God, you know what show I was obsessed with? So every Thursday, a new episode would come out on Peacock, and I was obsessed with the resort. I'm trying to get my bangs a little bit more sorted. My camera cut out and I had to delete some stuff to make some room to be able to get this last little clip. I have no idea what I was in the process of saying, but I'm gonna finish my lip. Now I'm going to be using the Tarte Quench Lip Rescue in the color Villa, because we love Love Island. Oh, that's another show that I binged. Let me get a little mirror and take a peek and see if I'm missing anything. Wow, I really haven't done a video like this in so long, but that was very therapeutic for me. I very much enjoyed it. Let's see how long it takes me to edit because that is probably one of my least favorite steps of this process. Anywho, I guess that's it. Okay, the intro may have been smooth, but the outro is gonna be difficult for me. As I mentioned, I do wanna get back into YouTube like full swing. So if you guys have any YouTube video ideas, please feel free to leave them down below. Also. I want to cover some true crime cases so if there's any that you guys have been dying to know more about or just want to see me cover make sure to leave those down below too if you like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully i will see you in next week's video <laughs> okay <laughs> love you guys bye